What is up everyone? My name is Flame and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up process lasso so that your system just feels more responsive and just like feels better. I use it daily. It's just something I use so that I don't have to optimize windows all the time. And generally I just leave it running because it just does a really good job compared to the default built-in window solutions like game bar and whatever scheduler Windows is using. Honestly, Process Lasso is like the best program for scheduling and just getting rid of like those background tasks that make frame spikes happen and latency spikes and basically everything that is bad about Windows in general. So without further ado, let's get started. So when you first boot up Process Lasso, it's going to look exactly like this. There's not really a whole lot that you need to change because out of the box, by default, it's usually going to have Pro Balance enabled, which is better version of the Windows processor scheduling that is built in to Process Lasso. And generally, you shouldn't have to change anything, but I found that actually changing a couple of things inside of Pro Balance actually makes a huge difference in both performance and like frame time and frame drops or whatever I just haven't noticed a whole lot of them in general after I changed some of these settings so we're gonna go here into the advanced options first thing I like to do is change the total system-wide CPU usage when adjustments should begin is 9% per process CPU usage when adjustments should begin should be set to 3% per process CPU usage when adjustments should stop should be set to 1% and allowed time CPU quota before adjustment in MS should be set to 900 the maximum overall time for adjustments should be set to 0 milliseconds so that it's instant the minimum time for an adjustment in milliseconds should be set to 4200 100 milliseconds. Now, if you're already confused and you have absolutely no idea what any of this means, essentially this is just optimizing the scheduler. So you're making and building your own scheduler for your CPU so that tasks can be better handled by Windows with this program, essentially. It just optimizes every program for your particular use case that you're doing on the operating system and low priority tasks will be pro-balanced and that's exactly what Process Lasso does. The next setting I usually like to have on is ignore all foreground processes. Do not act on children of the foreground process, and they give little descriptions of what these do, so you can read along if you want, but generally I just say keep these on because I've been doing testing, and these are all on by default usually, but if they're not, just enable them. The last setting I usually like to change in here is disable CPU core parking, because core parking, if you didn't know, is actually what causes a significant can jump in latency and performance because um, even though you have a desktop for some reason Windows would like to think that you have a laptop and to save energy they disable CPU cores or they uh, turn off CPU cores by parking them and if you want to have the most performance at all times and you do not care about energy usage or anything like that you just got to turn off CPU core parking so just go ahead and do that. Now, Pro Balance does have its fair share of issues and that is why they have a set excluded processes here. So generally, I recommend playing around. And if you're having trouble with your application, then just include it inside of the Pro Balance exclusions. But uh, I usually like to keep uh, con host in here, NVIM and uh, WT.exe. VS Code, I don't know. I just, uh, I was told to put that in there for some reason, even though I don't have VS Code. Uh, but the three that you do want in there are WT t.exe nvim.exe and conhost.exe if these are included in pro balance it will cause even more stuttering and performance issues in your games vs code is just like optional i guess i mean if you have vs code for some odd reason pro balance just likes to mess around with vs code i don't know why it just makes it perform terribly so that is it for the pro balance settings the next setting is going to be power plan now by default it's going to install bit some highest performance and it's going to have that active but you don't necessarily want the Bitsum highest performance power plan to be active immediately. You want it to either be set to balanced or balanced maximum performance overlay or balanced max performance overlay. Why do I say balanced max performance overlay over Bitsum highest performance is because balanced max performance overlay is an optimized version of balanced that doesn't park your cores and it gives you more performance in general. 
It's the default Windows configuration. Like if you were to go into the settings application here and you were to go to power and sleep, it's literally just this right here. It's just the switching it to the best performance setting and it is always keeping it on that because for some reason Windows, even Windows 11 decides that maximum performance, it doesn't like to keep it on that all the time. Sometimes it jumps between high performance and balanced. And if you're on a Ryzen processor, I generally do not recommend using any other power plan other than the balanced power plan or balanced max performance power plan. Just because AMD themselves put out a statement and I'm gonna put that right now on screen that using the balanced power plan is the properly optimized and balanced power plan for Windows and for the scheduling of a Ryzen processor. So if you're using the balanced power plan on Ryzen, you will see a significant bump in both performance and better general scheduling. And again, the Pro Balance will make sure that stutters don't happen and that your system stays responsive and it's just better scheduling in general. I've already mentioned that, but I'm going to say it again. The next is something that is meant for people who have a low amount of memory. So if you didn't know, Process Lasso has its own built-in memory reduction feature. So if you have less than 16 gigabytes of RAM or if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, enabling Smart Trim is actually a really smart idea. So if you go here and into the smart trim options. You can copy my settings here. So uh, enabling smart trim every 15 minutes is generally a good rule of thumb is to have it clear your RAM after every 15 minutes. Trim working sets if RAM threshold is greater than 80%. That's basically saying don't actually clear my memory unless it's above 80%. Only for processes whose exceed 356 megabyte. Again, I just say 356 megabyte because you don't want it to be like excessively large because if you have a low amount of memory you don't want it to just eat it all the time and then go to your page file. This next part down here, uh, generally I do not recommend setting this to 8,124 megabyte. I recommend setting this to half of your memory. So for 16 gigabyte users, that would be 8,124. For 8 gigabyte users, that'd be 4,096. And for anybody above that, Smart Trim really isn't necessary if you have 32 gigabyte of RAM or more. Just set it to half your RAM. That, that's a general rule. Now, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I still set this to 8,124. The only reason I do that is because I use my PC pretty much all the time. I hardly shut it off these days and contrary to belief what people say it is not a terrible idea to leave your pc running all the time just as long as you keep into account the amount of things you have open and restarting weekly i still restart weekly but i do tend to keep my computer running most of the week so like pretty much all of the week that's essentially why i don't really recommend smart trim if you use a higher amount of ram moving on here we do need to set exclusions so if you don't set these exclusions you will have issues with huge freeze ups of the desktop stuttering in games audio crackling stuff like that because many of these memory trimming solutions are not smart enough to identify these Windows processes that actually need the memory. And if you clear it, then it gets mad at you. Windows gets mad at you. So the first one you wanna put inside of this list is the Audio DG. This is your entire audio engine. This is what runs all of the audio on Windows. So just put that in here and you shouldn't have any audio issues. CR, CS, rss.exe is another process that is finicky if you clear memory constantly so just make sure that you have that inside there as well then you have dwm.exe just make sure that this is in here as well and then you have fontdriver.exe this one's pretty self-explanatory it's just the fonts for all your text on Windows and if you clear the memory constantly then it will give you graphical glitches with your fonts or some fonts just won't load L-S-A-L-S-O is the lasso, the process lasso process. So is L-S-A-S-S.exe is also process lasso. You do not want it to purge the memory of process lasso. It doesn't even use that much, guys. If you take a look here at my task manager, obviously OBS is taking the most and all my other programs are going to take the most. But if you take a look here at name and you take a look at process lasso, seven megabytes, seven megabytes. And if you take a look down here, the engine only takes six megabytes of RAM. It is very, very, very lightweight. So that is why you should have it inside of the exclusions list for clearing the memory because there's really no point in clearing 
process lasso's memory because it is just such low memory usage and resource usage. And by the way, any of these yellow spikes that you see here are a pro balance event. So it just tells you when a pro balance event happens is whenever there's a yellow line that goes through here, that's a pro balance event and then it adds it to the counter. Moving along here, we're gonna do SMSS. I am not sure what this does, but I was told to put this in here by the kind people who helped me set this up. So svchost.exe, this one's also pretty self-explanatory, but you should not be clearing any of these svchosts.exes as they are very important to your memory management. And generally, you do not want your memory management to be fully controlled by Smart Trim inside of Process Lasso. You should want it to be also controlled slightly by Windows. So that's why I include that in there. Winlogon.exe is just another thing that basically is like a core service for your operating system and it doesn't like it when you clear the memory or purge the cache so just have that inside the exclusions list and uh, that's really all you need to do and process lasso is good to go and you should have pretty much absolutely no problems and as you can see here process uh, pro balance is doing its job like here it just made edge view web application which i'm pretty sure is the weather bar here that I use in the taskbar and it essentially is just doing its job. It is taking these processes and it is making it so that my system doesn't have any like spikes in usage or like background usage or anything like that and that's really it. So moving on to the uh, optional features that I like to sometimes tweak. So if we go into here and we go into the system timer resolution. Now Currently, this is set to 0.5 or whatever this is, but generally, I do recommend just leaving this at default if you're on newer hardware, but if you are on older hardware, you can just click the max button here, hit set, and then hit set at every boot. Do not hit apply globally as this will break a lot of things. So just do set at every boot and then hit set and max or max and then set and you you should you should be good to go. So it even tells you what the current timer is. For me, it's bumping around 0.5 whenever I'm moving my mouse to 1ms, which is totally normal and it's expected behavior. So basically, if you want to play around with the timer resolution, be my guess. But in general, I don't really see a need to play around with the timer resolution as the default one inside of Windows generally does a pretty decent job. So yeah, that's really all you have to take away from this video is just setting up those things and you should be good to go. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe subscribe to the channel and join the Discord. The link will be in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see on my channel, please put them down in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions, feedback, constructive criticism, and I'll see you guys next time.